Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about how to import a database table into our project as an entity framework model. And I did a lot of research, did some trial and error this morning, and I think I have it down to my own method of doing this. Um, there are probably some other ways to do this, but I will go over how I, I would do it. And if you like this kind of stuff, I try to find different things in code, and I, I teach myself different things, and as I teach myself, I like to share with you guys. So if that interests you, hit subscribe, really appreciate it. And then a little plug, I'll have this desk linked down below. It's the desk that I use every single day. And if you're interested in the standing desk, this is the one to get in my opinion. Um, so yeah, it'll be in the description if you're in the market for a new standing desk. So here's our database that we've been working in the last eight videos or so. By the way, there's a whole playlist if you haven't seen my other Entity Framework core videos. And we use uh, ASP.NET Core, and you might learn some ASP.NET Core alongside if you're interested. And you want to check those out. But if you've been paying attention, you know that we had two users and music um, tables already. And I added this playlist just before making this video. And let's look at it real quick. There's an ID, and there's a playlist name, and that's it. And the playlist name is not null, and it's text. And then ID is an integer, and it also auto increments. It says up here, the primary key is ID, and it auto increments. So we'll keep that in mind. And if we look, there's no data in here as of right now. So what I want to do is I want to say, hey, can we take this database table that already exists and bring it into our project using Entity Framework? And uh, that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So we're going to add a new model. It's going to be the playlist model. And uh, then we can add it to our demo context as a DB set. So in order to do this, we need to run a command in Tools, NuGet Package Manager, and then the Package Manager console. And the command is scaffold dash DB context. And then the first parameter is our connection string, which for me, it's just this guy. And let's pin this so it doesn't disappear on us. And then the next is what package are we using? So in our case, I'm using Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQLite. So I'll uh, view the properties of this and just copy the name because I will likely mess it up if I'm typing it all out. And then there's some parameters that we're going to enter when running this. So one parameter is the output directory, and that is dash output dir. And this is saying when we create our model, or models, where are they going to go? In our case, it's going to go in the models folder. So we'll do output dir space and then models. And then similarly, the context dir, because this is going to create a new context for us. Uh, I couldn't find a way for it to add on to our current context. So what I want to do is I want to take what we need from the new context that it makes and paste it in our current context and then delete it and uh, hopefully it'll make sense as we go along. So context dir, which is also models, and then context, which is the name of our context file, and you can name it whatever, as long as it doesn't already exist, because um, it will fail if it has to override unless you force it. So this is gonna be demo context two. And then another parameter you can do is tables, and this is where you can specify, okay, what tables am I bringing in from our database? If you don't specify tables, it'll just bring in every single table as a model. Uh, but in our case, I just want to bring in playlists. So I'm just gonna say playlists. And if you had multiple, you could do playlist, comma, and then another one, comma, and can keep going as you need to. And then lastly, I'm going to do data annotations. Hopefully I spelled that right, data annotations. Yeah, I think so. And so what that'll do is it'll add to our model when it creates it, things like this, where it's required, um, the range. It's not gonna have an error message, right? Because we don't actually define that thing or that kind of stuff in our database. That isn't defined anywhere. If we wanted to add that, we would have to go in and explicitly add it in the future. And I think those are all the parameters I'm gonna use in this example. Hopefully this works, we'll hit enter and watch on the right what gets created. So let's hit enter and we're going to get a warning, but that's okay, I'm just going to ignore that for now. And you can see there's a new 
demo context too, if we look at it, there's a bunch of nonsense. Um, and the only thing I really want to take is this new DB set. So I'm gonna do a control X on that part and then paste it in our current context, just like that. And I'm gonna take this virtual keyword away and then save it. And then I'm just going to delete this whole file because we don't need it anymore. And now if we look, there's also a playlist and you can see that this is the key and this is required. And I'm gonna remove this null will disable. And I'll save and that's all good there. So I guess the next step is let's see if this thing that we just brought in is actually going to work. So I'm gonna to go to our home controller and in the index, I'm just going to have it insert a an object of type playlist that we just created into our database just to make sure the connection to the database is working. So let's make a new object, call it PL is equal to new playlist. And then we're gonna give it a playlist name is equal to new playlist. We don't need to give an ID because it should auto increment. And then let's do a using statement var db is equal to dem, uh, new demo context. And we can do db.add pl and then db.save changes, right? Just like we did uh, in our video when we were adding to the database from the form. Okay, so let me put a breakpoint here to make sure we reach it. And let me just run it. Then we go to the home page or the index of the website. It should hit that breakpoint. And it's flashing, which means it did. And here we go. Let's just step over it. Hit F11. It added it. Make sure it holds value new playlist. Good. All right, hit F11 again, save changes and it should have saved it to our database. So let's see if it did. Let's uh, go back to browse data. And here we go. We have ID one, new playlist. And if I created a second one, uh, let's not say it's new, let's just say second. Save that, run it again. Let's continue from the breakpoint and refresh our data. Here we go, second playlist. So that's how simple it is to bring in a table that already exists, or you can bring in all the tables, it's up to you, uh, from an existing database into your project using entity framework. And then you can do the same old, you know, methods that you used before uh, to add it, to update it, to delete from, if, if you already have the database made. So thanks for watching guys, appreciate it. Hope to see you in the next one and take care.